What does it take for a winery to become an American icon, a Napa Valley classic, while crafting award-winning wines? I'm at Duckhorn Vineyards, and we're about to find out. Located in the heart of Napa Valley sits Duckhorn Vineyards, one of the first 40 vineyards in Napa Valley. Known for its role as the first American winery to pioneer luxury Merlot, this iconic winery helped establish Merlot as one of North America's great varietals. Winemaker Rene Airy has been with Duckhorn for 17 years and continues the tradition of producing world-class wines. She has a lot to be proud of, so it's only appropriate to celebrate with some sipping. Let's start pouring and Shall we start? Yeah. Okay. What are we starting with? Well, the first wine we're pouring today is our 2018 Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. And this is a more of a traditional style Bordeaux white. We've been making it since 1982, so it's been a part of our portfolio for a long time. Right. And so we blend a little bit of Semillon into our Sauvignon Blanc, really adding a little bit more kind of weight and viscosity to the blend, a little bit more of that kind of depth. Uh, I think it allows for it to be a little bit more food friendly mm -hmm. type wine, so a wide range of pairing. Um, this is one of my favorite wines to, to make and to drink. And that, that blend gives it a little bit more complexity and balance, and it, that is similar to the way they do it in Bordeaux. Exactly, actually. yeah. A little bit more traditional style. What other varietals do you make here? So we do um, we do mostly Bordeaux varietals. So mm -hmm. we've been focusing on the red Bordeaux. So Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, of course, one of right. the varietals we are well known for. Cap Franc, Petit Bordeaux, Malbec. We do the Sauvignon Blanc, and we also do some Chardonnay, which we started in 2012. Some would argue, and I would be among them, that, that Duckhorn put Merlot on the map in Napa Valley. Yes, Dan and Margaret are definite pioneers here in the valley and yeah. really put luxury Merlot on the map in really in North America. So it's one of the reasons why I came to Duckhorn about 17 years ago. So Merlot was kind of what drew me here. So what are the most rewarding and the most challenging aspects of being a winemaker? One of the most rewarding is just being able to enjoy the wine with family and friends and kind of sit back and think about what went into that bottle and just kind of everything that came together over the course of, you know, a year or two years and just kind of enjoying that with each sip. That's yeah. kind of my favorite piece. Challenges, you know, you do the weather, you know yeah. that Mother Nature <laughs> controls what we do. We're an agriculture business, yeah. so you can't control that. You got to roll with the punches and you kind of just got to take them as it comes. I think I have three or four different weather tracking systems that I, <laughs> that I go back to each day to look at what's going on here in the valley to make sure I'm ready. I may start so. consulting you for weather information. <laughs> I don't know. I got your direct line now. <laughs> <laughs> so how's, how's 2019 going so far? 19 you're, you're in the harvest already. We are. We're yeah. in the harvest. We started uh, mid-August with our Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. They're always kind of our first uh, first varietals to hit the winery. And things are going great. I love your Sauvignon Blanc, but uh, you know I'm here for the Merlot. Okay. I want to try that. Three All right. Palms well, let's vineyard. jump into it. <laughs> okay. We have our 2016 Three Palms Merlot, which is our flagship wine. This is one that we've been making since our first vintage in 1978 and is an absolute favorite of mine. It's a favorite of mine as well. It's a beautiful ruby color. Yeah, this is uh, this is a wine that's it's really a uh, structured. It's an age-worthy Merlot. It's one that you can certainly lay down. Um, it's got a lot of depth and complexity and nuance, and all that is a result of the soil out there. Maybe, maybe this is an oversimplification, but uh, as someone who enjoys your wine, I've always thought of your Merlot as um, having a Cabernet-like structure. Mm -hmm. And it's not a wimpy Merlot at all. No, you're uh, right. I've, I've I've heard that before actually. Um, there's kind of a saying that we made a little bit more of a masculine style Merlot. And a little bit more of a feminine style um, Cabernet. Cabernet yeah. yeah, and um, you know, obviously different varietals. It's all about kind of finessing the tannins and finessing the structure. And the so. fish just lingers and lingers pleasantly, I might add. Do we get to walk through the uh, vineyard? Take yeah, a look so at Yeah, so we have Merlot coming into the winery today, so I would love to take you back there and show you around. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, let's before do that. We go, one all more right. sip. All right, let's <laughs> do it. Cheers, Spencer. Every year from August through October, Napa Valley comes alive with the excitement of the harvest. Vineyards are filled with workers rushing to pick grapes at their peak ripeness. These grapes are amazing. This is Merlot from Calistoga AVA. It's located just around the corner from Three Palms Vineyard, actually, just a few miles up the road here. So Whoa. this is going to be some of our first Merlot that hits the winery. It's always early ripening. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Clone 15. And always shows this really beautiful, kind of vibrant red fruit, a lot of plum, a lot of cherry, um, and really plush kind of tannin profile. Wow, delicious. Mm -hmm. They're gonna dump all the 
fruit onto the metering table. Right. This is basically going to kind of spread out the fruit and allow for it to get onto the sorting table in a nice even layer so we can sort through it and pull out any mauve or material other than grapes, mostly leaves and stuff like that. Right. Now I know where good wine stems from. My tour actually ends where the magic happens, in the wine lab. So what have we here? It looks like a fruit juice buffet. <laughs> Spencer, we are here in the lab, and there's a lot of action going on. So this is kind of exciting. This is our first finished ferment ah, for okay. the 2019 harvest. It's a semillon that we picked on the 14th of this month, and it just finished fermenting. So there's it's, some alcohol content yep, here. Yep, there is absolutely yeah. some alcohol in there. It's from our Toffinelli Vineyard, uh, which is a grower we've been working with for over 25 years, just up the road here on Dunwill Lane. And it's got this really beautiful kind of passion fruit. There's a lot of tropical notes going on in there. But just that semion component, that yeah. viscosity is really coming through. Wow. I like this just as it is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be a, a component in our final Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc blend. So Amazing. Yeah, Absolutely it tastes amazing. great, right? For decades, crafting classic wines has remained at the heart of Duckhorn Vineyard's philosophy, and Renee continues to keep that legacy alive. Coming up, wow, look at that.